Yes. They are on also. Oh, so. <coughs> they are on also. This activity is being brought to you by this, this station, its advertisers, and the member schools of the Kansas State High School Activities Association. No rebroadcasts in whole or in part may be made without the written permission of the Kansas State High School Activities Association. Hello and welcome to Travis Field, Fig Millen, Trent Alexander, Nish Millen here. We're getting ready for the sub-state kickoff here. It's the undefeated Hoisington Cardinals against the 8-3 and three Norton Blue Jays. We're about 10 minutes off from the... Uh, kickoff here of the substate and the big prize will be for the winner to travel down to Salina for the st two way state championship they will take on the winner of Nemaha Central or Riley County who are playing tonight again at seven o'clock so there again uh, we welcome you here and uh, we want to give you some media where you can reach us and have people tell you can tell people where we are at of course it's going to be at 106.7 on your radio dial then you can also stream it over your computer laptop or even sit in the stands with your uh, cell phone Android and or iOS phone that will be www.kqnk Dot com. One other thing that we're, you'll be able to do tonight, you'll be able to see it live here uh, as the USD 211 will bring this broadcast to you with our audio here. That is going to be uh, live, L-I-V-E dot USD 211 dot org. Again, it's live dot USD 211 dot org. And of course, that is Brought to you by USD 211 as they'll be able to broadcast that this uh, sub state game here in Norton against the Hoisington Cardinals and the Norton Blue Jays. Cold night here tonight in the field. If you were looking on uh, Facebook, you can see the snow has surrounded Travis Field uh, today about uh, 1 30. They start, got the shovels out, got the snow blowers out, and they shoveled this field out, and it is looking really nice. Those guys did an awesome job. 
I believe the wrestling team did the visitors' stands over there. We had teachers out here. We had members of the community and uh, the maintenance staff. You got to give them big kudos. And and uh, like I said, Trent, <laughs> what a what a view this is. Yeah, beautiful out here tonight. Like I said, snow on the sidelines. Um, haven't seen this for quite a while. I tell you that um, they did a great job clearing the field, and a lot of work went into that. And, of course, they're probably wanting to get right on schedule, so what they're going to do is they're going to go ahead and go right to the National Anthem, so we're going to go ahead and send it back to KQNK Studios. Hello and welcome back to Travis Field as the Norton Blue Jays make their way on the field. The Hoisington uh, Cardinals already have made their way entrance onto Travis Field. and uh, Like we mentioned, this is a big game here. Winner gets to go to state. And Trent, uh, what, do you have a little stats of any sorts there on Co Hoisington? Well, they're, um, they got a good running back. <laughs> well, that's true. That's true. Um, you know, like, but with that said, like I said, I, I really think Blue Jays are playing some of the better football that they have all year. Um, I see improvement each game. Um, I hope they can come out here and, and button down the special teams a little bit. Um, and uh, if we can stop um, you know, their run game, we have a really good shot at, at winning this game. Like I said, I, I feel like week to week we've gotten better and better. And uh, you know, we're led by some great seniors down there, some good football players. And, uh, you know, like I said, I believe we're better than what our record states with those uh, early losses. Um, we could very easily, without those early losses, we could very easily be uh, sitting, you know, with them as our only loss for the season. And, of course, the uh, Blue Jays did play Hoisington at uh, Week 8, I believe that. They uh, had a victory here at Travis Field by a score of 38-7 to against the Blue Jays. At halftime, that uh, score was 10-0 to nothing with Hoisington leading at halftime. And uh, then, of course, the number 33, Wyatt Pedigo, one of the main watched people in all classes and, and running backs over 2,000 yards this year. And I believe 36 touchdowns, if not more, for uh, Pedigo, so he uh, was instrumental in getting a lot of those uh, scores for the Hoisington Cardinals the last time that the Blue Jays met the Cardinals. So again, we're going to send out the captains here as the captains uh, are going to be number 67, Judson Wilfong, number 60, Dante Smith, number 17, Brandon Vasseur, number 1, Cade Melvin. For the Hoisington Cardinals, and I don't know if I can see their numbers there, but as they, uh, it's going to be number 79, number 69, number 33, and I think that's number 3. 79 being Riley Filbert, number 69. 69 will be uh, Shanice, Shanice. And obviously number 33 is going to be out there. And Wyatt Pedigo, and did you say number 3, three. Cole yeah. Steiner. So those are going to be your captains for Hoisington tonight. Again, uh, 
We're about three minutes away from the kickoff here. You can find us at live.usd211.org, kqnk.com, or 106.7 AM and FM Norton. So there uh, is a few avenues that you can uh, get to the game here with the Blue Jays 8 and 3, Hoisington 11 and 0. As they do the traditional coin toss here, we're at Substate on Travis Field, and both teams will be able to host two games here, so that's kind of why uh, th normally the East would be hosting this game, and that would have been Hoisington, but they would have had three straight games, so they uh, allowed Norton to have another game to host here in the playoffs. Looks like um, Hoisington will defend the East goal. Wait a minute. They're, <laughs> they're turning them around here. Yeah. Hey, Norton, Norton will win the toss, and they will defer. And Poisington will take the ball as they defend the west goal here. So Blue Jays, again, will be defending the east goal as they will kick to Hoisington. The starting lineups for the Norton Blue Jays tonight is going to be number one, Cade Melvin, a six foot, 180 pound senior. Number five, Carter Jones, a 150 pound senior. Number 12, Jonah Reuter, a 175 pound junior. Number 13, Luke Walmart, 170 pound senior. Number 17, Brandon Missouri, 180 pound senior. Number 21, Tucker Pondestill, a 195-pound senior, number 50, Christian Hawks, a 265-pound junior, number 54, Alex Ocker, 190-pound senior, Connor Alexander, number 55, a 200-pound senior, number 60, Dante Smith, a 295-pound senior, and Judson Wilfong, number 67, a 220-pound senior. And <coughs> for the Hoisington Cardinals, you got number one, Cade Mason, number two, Avery Brewer, number three, Cole Steinert. Number 25, Hunter Morris. Number 31, Quincy Cross. Number 33, Wyatt Pettigo. Number 34, Joshua Ball. Number 69, Cameron uh, Schnuies. Number 70, Nolan Wilhorn. Number 75, Cole Gill Gilland. And number 79, Riley Filburn. Uh, Blue Jays getting ready to kick off here. Uh, you know, we've had a couple hiccups here on special teams. Like I said, we got to have uh, get down there and get this stopped and get this game started out right. Back for the Hoisington Cardinals, the number 25, Hunter Morris, the number 33, Wyatt Pettigo. Kicking off for the Blue Jays, number 13, Luke Walmar. Walmar steps off his paces. And we're about ready to start here. Substate, Hoisington against Norton. Kick off the kick uh, towards the south uh, line there. It's going to be Hunter Hunter with the ball. He's going to be hit in there by a couple Blue Jays, but he's going to fall forward, keeps his feet moving. Nice little run back as he had taken that about the 7, 8-yard line, and he gets it up to the 18-yard line. Yeah, originally hit by Carter Jones, and then finally brought down by number 17, Brandon Fasura for the Blue Jays. Nice little run back in there, though. Going to have decent field position. Oisington comes out in their double wing formation. Pedigo the fullback. Two receivers actually to the near side, one receiver to the far side. Haxon, the quarterback, he hands it off to uh, Pedigo, and he's gang tackled. He'll gain about two on the play. Yeah, led in there by big old number 67, Judson Wilfong. But like you said, a bevy of Blue Jays in there to help him out. And that's exactly what we need on Pedigo tonight. We've got to, uh, you got to bring your friend because he's a big load to bring down. We're going to call it second in a long seven here. 11.26 left here in this first quarter, 0-0. Zero to zero. Put a man into motion. Hex is going to hold on to the ball as he's tripped up, but he does fall forward for two more. Yeah, but, uh, Dante Smith grabbed him by the ankle and was able to hold on for a minimal gain in there. And So far, uh, proven pretty tough to run up that middle of that Blue Jays front. It's going to be third and four for the Cardinals of Hoisington. 10.58 left here in this first 
uh, quarter, 0-0 zero to zero is our score. As they put two receivers, one to the south side and one to the north side. Double wing in with the fullback. Underneath centers, Haxon, as he's going to pitch it out in there to Morris. Morris is around the edge, has room to run as he gets brought down from behind, crosses the 50-yard line. Yeah, um, number 17, Brandon Vasura was able to catch him from behind and bring him down, but um, not until they, a pretty good gain in there. Um, Looks kinda, like 26 yards, is that right, Nish? Kind of the thunder and then the lightning. Oh, 16 yard. I apologize. The ball will rest on the 50. First and 10 for the Cardinals. As they give it up the middle, and they hit the Pedigo right at the line of scrimmage, but he stays low, keeps his feet moving. He's a very, very hard runner. Yeah, wrapped up in there by Gavin Sproul. But like you said, he uh, made contact, and by the time he falls forward, you know, 6'1", uh, falling forward, he always gets a couple yards. It's going to be second and six for Hoisington. 9.55 left here in this first quarter. Zero to zero is our score as Hoisington is methodically moving this ball down. That big and run helped him quite a bit. And they, Like I said, they've been smashing it up the middle, and then they had the fast guy around the end. Receiver to the near side. There's a put a man into motion. It's going to be Haxon with the ball as he's hit hard as he gets up to about the Blue Jay 45-yard line, a gain of two for Mason Haxton. Yeah, brought down in there by number 67, Judson Wilfong, and number 54, Alex Ocker for the Blue Jays. They're going to call it third and four for the Cardinals. And the last time they had lightning around the end there, and we just wasn't ready for it. They had a jet sweep thrown out there to Morris. Let's see where they go this time. Double wing. Everybody sits in tight. Third oh, and four. They can, start. They're going to have yeah, flags out there. They jumped a little early on that one. Um, Legal that's, procedure call on the Hoisington. That's going to help us on the down and distance anyway. It's going to make it really from short and manageable to uh, third and long now. They're going to call it third and nine for Hoisington as the ball rests just off the 50-yard line. 8.51 left here in the first quarter, 0-0. Zero to zero. And I imagine everything's pretty tight. It's kind of cold out there. If, you, if you're watching, you can see the snow piled up around the edge of Travis Field. They put a man into motion. They're going to give it to Pedigo. Pedigo bounces it outside. He's going to have a first and ten and a little bit more. Did I see a flag come out? Uh, I can only hope so. Yeah. But, you know, they, they've had a lot of success um, going around the end. I don't know if they're getting sealed off. Actually, I've seen him bounce it out. Yeah. So he probably was it, intended to go over the right tackle. Yeah. 15-yard um, gain in there for Wyatt Pedigo. First and 10 for the Cardinals. 8.28 left here in the first quarter. Blue Jays are pretty much tightening it up on the line of scrimmage. It's They're bouncing them outside is what's been kind of in a thorn right now. As again, they put a man into motion, and Mason's going to hold on to the ball as he tries to find Pedigo or follow Pedigo. Yeah, wrapped up in there by Brandon Vasura. But like I said, you got... Uh, Judson Wilfong and Cade Melvin uh, in the bottom of that pile also. So, like I said, nice gang ca tackling in there by the Blue Jays for really a minimal gain. It'll be second and nine now for the Cardinals. Eight minutes remaining here in this first quarter as Mason Haxon comes back to his huddle with the play. See if the Blue Jays can shut down that outside lane for Pedigo and Morris. They do put a man into motion, and it's Pedigo. Pedigo gets hit behind the line of scrimmage, and he's hit and ran over by several Blue Jays. Yeah, Brandon Vasura coming in on a stunt from his linebacker position, shot through a gap right there and hit Pedigo around the waist and wrapped him up, and Pedigo had nowhere to go. Well, they tackled him at the 40, but they give him a mark of... <laughs> <laughs> I don't know about that mark. One, one yard loss. Vasura hit him in the backfield and drug him backwards. He would. He did not go forward after that. Third and ten now for the Cardinals. 7-11 left here in the first quarter. Zero to zero is our score. See the Blue Jays can 
do a stand here on a third and nine as Haxon rolls out, being chased, throws across the field, and it's incomplete. Good coverage in there by the Blue Jays. His intended receiver was Hunter Morris. Yeah, that was Cade Melvin on the coverage, and actually Carter Jones, I believe, had an option at that tip almost a little bit, which would have been nice because uh, I think they might go for it here on fourth and ten. Fourth and ten, the ball is at the Blue Jay 35-yard line. 6.57 left here in the first quarter, 0-0. Zero to zero. Mason Haxton, he comes back to the huddle. Gives his instructions as the Cardinals will come up to the line of scrimmage. They will come up in the double wing formation. They're going for it, fourth and ten. Blue Jays pumped, and they put a man into motion as Mason Haxton drops back, does a quarterback draw, and his intended receiver, he throws, it was number two, Cade Mason, and he would I tell you what, play off on that. Gavin Sproul was blocked in the back, and then <laughs> the Hawks, you could tell his jersey was, was pulled a foot away from his from his shoulder pads. I don't know how either one of those wasn't called, but um, anyway, nice stop there by the Blue Jays, exactly what they needed. Blue Jays will take over on their own 35-yard line, first and 10, 6.53 left here in this first quarter, 0-0. Zero to zero. Blue Jays' defense holds this powerful Hoisington Cardinal, and there's flags. I believe we're going to have a false start here. You no, know, it's going to be on Hoisington. It's going to be offsides on Hoisington, and what a start to this game for the Blue Jays as they start with a penalty to make it first and five. Well, we talked about earlier um, today, they've got to start fast, and that's exactly what the Blue Jays are doing down there. Like I said, good stand by the uh, by the defense, and now the, um, if the offense can get out here and start fast, we're going to be in pretty good shape. Got a, got a score update for you. Oh, we got uh, Plainville leading Smith Center 7-0 to zero wow. in the first quarter. Wow, that's another mid two mid-continent league schools going at it for a second time. First and five for the Blue Jays as they put receivers left and right underneath centers. Cade Melvin takes the snap, gives it to Walmart. Walmart gets a nice five, four-yard run, but he gets hit hard. He wasn't even touching for four yards. <laughs> yeah, but when that linebacker came up, like I said, he came up with a full head of steam. Um, Ocker was leading out front and um, didn't really see him because he came in from the side. Well, that was, actually the, wall up on that was a safety that come up. Oh, yeah. So he got past the linebackers. <laughs> yeah, he laid a wall up on old uh, Walmeyer. Second and one now for the Blue Jays. 6.20 left here in his first quarter. Shotgun formation for the Blue Jays. Cade Melvin, he's going to hold on to the ball. He's going to get the first and ten as they're trying to strip the ball out from him. Yeah, you, they better be holding on to that ball tonight because the Cardinals are, like I said, going after that ball, trying to strip it. Looks like a gain of four on the play for Melvin. First and ten for the Blue Jays as the ball rests on the Blue Jays' 48-yard line. 6.09 remaining here in the first quarter. 0-0 zero to zero is our score. Blue Jays' defense held the Hoisington Cardinals on their first series of downs. As the Blue Jays will send Ruder to the far side, Carter Jones to the near side, eye formation, Fonda still and Walmart in the backfield. Cade Melvin, he moves up underneath center, takes a snap, gives it off to Walmart. Walmart will hit the line of scrimmage, hits a wall of Hoisington Cardinals, maybe give him one on the play. Yeah, not much room up front. That closed in a hurry. Um, but I, I liked what the Blue Jays are doing. If we can get some yards from the run game and try to um, have some ball control and keep that ball away from the Cardinals, uh, methodically go downfield and score, uh, it's definitely going to work in our favor. Second and eight for the Blue Jays. And last year, or last time we played them, Blue Jays moved the ball well. They lost it in the red zone. Right, so let's exactly. See. They can do this. They put twins to the near side. Receiver to the far side. Shotgun formation. Melvin drops back. Throws downfield. Has a receiver caught. That's Gasper. Gasper's going to get into Cardinal territory at the 32-yard line. Yeah, nice job by Devin Gasper. Actually jumped up and caught it right between his numbers and brought it down. 18-yard pass completion from Melvin to Gasper. Gasper a little quiet this last couple weeks. And maybe he's going to have a game of his life tonight as the Blue Jays have a receiver to the near side and one to the far side. And they're going to go back into the I formation. A quick pitch in there to Walmart. Walmart stumbles. 
Wow. And a big loss on the play there for the Blue Jays. I didn't see if that was a safety or what came up, but Sproul hit him real, extremely hard, knocked that safety off balance, and the safety was still able to come up and make the play. Loss of four on the play makes it now second and 14 for the Blue Jays. Gasper comes in with the play. Melvin, his instructions, 422 left here in this first quarter. 0-0 zero to zero is our score. Blue Jays will put... Twins to the far side and a single receiver to the near side. They'll go to the shotgun formation. Second and 14 as they put a man into motion. That's Carter Jones. High snap. A quick pitch in there to Walmart. Walmart trying to get out of bat, uh, out to the side, but quickly closing in on him was Cade Mason for another loss on the play, a loss of four. Yeah, it just seems like uh, when he's in the shotgun, he's a long ways back there. So when you flip it out, you're automatically, you know, five yards or so behind the line of scrimmage, which, you know, seems like a long way to go even to get back up at, um, to neutral ground. Third and 18 for the Blue Jays. Ball resting at the Hoisington 40-yard line as they put trips to the near side, twins to the far side. Had to be thinking about Reuter here. Melvin drops back, looks to his left. He's going to take off as he... Scrambles, still on his feet, and he's going to be brought down at the line of scrimmage. No gain, and I think that's what he was looking for, was Reuters, Reuters trying to come across the field and was not able to to uh, get anywhere with that. Brought down by number 70, Nolan Wilborn for the Cardinals. Blue Jays forced to punt as it is a 4th and 18 situation. 3.03 left here in the first quarter. Back for the Boise the Cardinals is Avery Brewer. 143 pound seniors. He stands on his five yard line. Walmart with a high end over end kick. It's not that great of a kick. Blue Jays going to have to let us see if it gets a roll. It does get a little small roll, and they will down it at the 15. Yeah, it was a nice high kick. It's one that uh, you kind of hope would come down and maybe t- tag a Cardinal uh, somewhere, but they were, you know, they did a good job of staying away from it. I'm, that ball sounded like a rock, too. It did. It, and he <laughs> kicked that. Man, I imagine it being cold down there. Um, take some zing out of your foot. Blue Jays have to punt on their first series of downs, as the Cardinals had done prior to that, their series, as they now pitch it out there to number one, Mason. And he was hit behind the line of scrimmage, but it was going to be uh, Tucker Fon still bringing him down. Looks like a gain of one in there for Cade Mason as he took the pitch. Yeah, n- um, number 21, Tucker, fought a steal, uh, kind of with a stunt through there, and nice formed open field tackling there by Fauna Steel, and that's exactly what we got to do. you got to hit him around the waist, wrap up, and then use your body weight to bring him down. That's exactly what Tucker did there. Second and nine for the Cardinals. 2.08 left here in this first quarter as they're going to Handed up the middle. And I tell you what, that's some tough sledding uh, through that uh, defensive front of the Blue Jays. You got Judson Wolfarm coming up from the bottom of that pile. Uh, also, uh, you had Smith down there and in Vassar in the mix as well. That, that's a tall, tall order trying to run through the meat of that Blue Jays defensive front. 33, Wyatt Pettigo with three-yard gain now. It's going to be third and six now for the Cardinals. 133 left here in this first quarter. They put a man into motion. Fumble on the play, and they pick, Blazer picks it up, and the Blue Jays will. Yeah, just no no place for them to go. The Blue Jays were all over that, forcing the punt, the punt out of the Cardinals. Just a, an extremely good stand by that Blue Jays defensive front. It looked like the ball was laying out there for a little while, and I believe it's picked up in there by Mason, Cade Mason. Yeah, no place for him to go at all. Back for the Blue Jays standing on their own 48-yard line. It'll be Reuter and Carter Jones. First punt for the Cardinals. 56 seconds remaining here in this first quarter. It's a line drive kick in there, and it, It'll cross the 50 and will be down at the Blue Jay 48-yard line. So, again, the Blue Jays able to hold on Hoisington's second series. Let's see if the Blue Jays can move the ball again as they had started moving the ball well until they stalled out. Yeah, but can't say enough about that 
defensive front of the Blue Jays uh, just playing extremely tough in there. And like I said, helped out a ton on that series by the linebackers. Um, Fauna Steele and Vasura both getting in there and, and making some stuff happen from the linebacker position as well. 44 seconds left in the first quarter. 0-0 zero to zero Blue Jays. First and 10 from their own 48-yard line. Melvin puts a man into motion. That's going to be Ruder. Ruder and Melvin trying to roll out to his right, but he's going to be brought down with a big sack in there. That's going to be number 75, Gillian, with the big sack. Yeah, just, you know, good coverage by the Cardinals downfield. you, you got to give that to them. They, they were stride for stride with um, uh, with the receivers and just no place for Melvin to go. He had to try to bring it in and, and make something happen with his feet, and they were all over him. It's going to be... Let's call it second and 18. Second and 18 for the Blue Jays. As that is going to be the end of the first quarter. As the our score here at Substate, Hoisington Cardinals 0, Norton Blue Jays 0. The thrill of a touchdown, the excitement of a successful pass, all combined to remind us that state football championship games are only moments away. Sponsored by the Kansas State High School Activities Association, state championship playoffs will begin October 31st and conclude with the final games on November 30th. Attend the games, support your teams, and join the crowd during the final weeks of the Kansas high school football season beginning October 31st. For more information, call the Kansas State High School Activities Association at 785-273-7993-799. Welcome back to Travis Field. One quarter of play has been completed, and both teams set at 0-0. Zero to zero. Norton Blue Jays will have a second and 18 as they were sacked big time in there yeah. by number 75, Gillen. Both defenses playing extremely well in that first quarter. Shotgun formation. Melvin does quarterback draw, tries to cut up to his left, gets hit about the 45, falls up to the 47. Looks like a gain of seven on the play. Makes it a third and 12 situation now for the Blue Jays. Hey, we'd like to thank you if you're watching live.usd211.org. We had seen 799 people on there, and I know that we got another 100 or two on the radio and streaming. So uh, what a great, uh, this must be one of the great games of, of this evening. As the Blue Jays and the Cardinals 0-0 zero to zero right now in the second quarter. Twins to the far side as they put a man into motion. And it's going to be a direct snap in there to Walmeyer. Walmeyer will get about two yards on the play. It's going to be a fourth and ten situation now for the Blue Jays. Yeah, it, it's really tough when you start out in second and long. You know, you have a bad first first down. Um, you're kind of playing from behind. And, and they kind of expect certain plays out of you. So... Uh, that t it's a tough situation. Brewer back for the Cardinals. He's given a lot of respect in there to Luke Walmeyer. As Blue Jays face with a fourth and ten situation. High snap. Walmeyer, nice end over end kick. We'll get a Blue Jay bounce as Brewer wanted to feel that, but uh, he's going to back out of it, and the Blue Jays will down it at the five yard line of Hoisington. Yeah, beautiful kick in there by Walmeyer. Like you said, he gave him a lot of respect back there, and it still went by him. Just, you know, uh, Walmeyer showing an extremely strong leg all year long and uh, proved it again here on uh, this play. 10-40 remaining here in this first half. 0-0 zero to zero is our score. If you didn't know, Blue Jay Travis Field got about five inches of snow, and it's all on the sidelines. As Hoisington comes up the line of scrimmage, first and 10 from their five. 10-40 left here in this first quarter. Is it going to... Give it off to the end to Pedigo. Pedigo breaks several tackles. It's still breaking him, still on his feet. Yeah, I can't imagine how many blue jerseys that Pedigo ran through there, but there was at least six or seven different Blue Jays trying to tackle him high, and it just didn't work. Let's see. The ball is on the 34, so a 
gain of 28 yards there. He was hit at the line of scrimmage. <laughs> he was. Popped that out yep. outside and was able to stay on his feet. He got hit about three times before he finally came down. Yeah, as, like I said, as I was watching it, um, people were trying to tackle him up around the shoulder pads and just getting uh, bounced off like a pinball. First and 10 for the Cardinals from their own 34-yard line. 10-15 left here in this first quarter or set first half as they give it to Pedigo. Pedigo will get about nine nine yards on that play. Like I said, uh, had to have four or five jerseys in there to bring him down. Led in there by uh, Judson Wolfong and Devin Gasper. They're going to give him eight on that carry, so it's going to be second and two for the Cardinals. And we're seeing some slipping going on down yeah, there as their definitely. man that put, put in motion fell down. I thought, oh, good, I hope that's the guy that's <laughs> supposed to be carrying the ball. Uh, uh, that's exactly what I was thinking. Double wing formation as they pitch it out there to Pedigo. Pedigo yeah. gets brought down. There's going to be a flag on the play, but Pedigo got brought down by shoestring tackle by number 10, Gavin Sproul. D Gavin Sproul shot through there like he was shot out of a cannon. And like I said, um, nice tackling. They're going around his ankles to actually bring him down for a nice uh, nice yeah. loss. Yeah. <laughs> Going to have the penalty on top of things. Well, they called it face mask? Or it no, can't be a face mask. On oh. oh, he had hands to the face. Hands to the face. <laughs> As that will go against Hoisington. <laughs> and that will be a spot foul. So that will be from the place that he was brought down. He was brought down at the 40, which was about the almost a two-yard loss for Pedigo as Gavin Sproul had shot in there from his defensive end and tripped him up. And they'll put it back, back to the 30-yard line. Cardinals need to get to the uh, 40, 44, 43-yard line in order to get the first and 10. Second and call it uh, 14 as they put a man into motion. It's a going to be a counter in there but the Blue Jays snipped that out from the start. Yeah, swallowed up in there by that defensive front, led in there by number 67, Judson Wolfong and also uh, number 6 Gasper leading the way but several Blue Jays in there uh, to smother him up. Mason with the carry in there. Number 1 and they're going to, no gain on the play, boy. I thought they stopped him behind the line of scrimmage. <laughs> I th yeah, just like I said, the defense for the Blue Jays playing lights out so far in this first half. Third and 14 for the Cardinals. As again, they put a man into motion. Mason Haxon drops back, throws the pass, and it's going to be incomplete oh, as Jonah Reuter come oh. over the top and slap that ball straight down. Beautiful coverage in there by Reuter. You, you absolutely couldn't play it any better than what Jonah Reuter played it right there. He he waited until uh, until the he had the ball in his hand so he didn't have any interference call and then slapped it right away. Just I I've, I've never seen better coverage uh, at this level. It's gonna be fourth and fourteen as the Blue Jays will go back on their forty yard line. Brewer the kicker, the punter, takes a snap. Blue Jays don't rush as much as the line drive end over end kick as Blue Jays will try to back out of there. And it will hit a Hoisington player. And the Blue Jays will have first and 10 from their own 41-yard line. Yeah, and you know, overall, the Blue Jays have uh, had pretty decent field position. So if we can get a string of plays um, strung together, we, you know, we've been able to move the ball that first series. So if we can get a string of plays moving together, we can get this ball down the field into scoring position. All right, so first and 10 for the Blue Jays. Back in the I formation, 8.26 left here in this first half as Melvin will hand it off to the fullback. I think he was trying to pull that out of, out of there. Yeah, um, but, you know, nice tough run in there by Fonsteel, falling forward and gaining those few extra yards. Going to make it, you know, second down and, what, four, uh, six or so? So got three or four yards there out of Fonsteel, and that's what we need uh, as we go down the field. Second and a seven for the Blue Jays as they're going to put a receiver to the far side, one to the near side, back to I formation. Melvin, Robson rolls back, throws downfield, has a receiver, that's Vasura. Vasura still on his feet, gets up to the 40. Yeah, Vasura, nice hands catch away from his body, tucks it in, 
takes a hit and keeps going. The second guy finally brings him down, but beautiful uh, throw and catch in there from Melvin to Vasura. 15-yard gain in there as Vasura comes in from his tight end spot. Exactly the kind of movement we need. Like I said, picked up four on the first down and then able to um, open up the playbook on second. Into the first quarter, seven to nothing for Plainville. Plainville against Smith Centers. Blue Jays zero to zero, moving down the field here. Melvin keeps it on a draw, still on his feet, gets across the forty, up to the thirty-eight. Like I said, after contact, Melvin, you know, able to fall forward for a couple of yards and actually get a positive gain out of that because he was hit at the line of scrimmage. Blue Jays faced with a second and eight situation here as they bring out a receiver and put in a, another, I believe, tight end. Is that uh, Drake Harding? Yeah, Drake Harding, number 87 for the Blue Jays. They're going to go double tights here and put a receiver out to the left and the right. They'll put Reuter into motion. They're going to give it to Reuter as he tries to get around the edge, stops, cuts in. He'll get to up to the, about the 35-yard line, a gain of about four on the play. Yeah, Reuter um, going around the end, showed some nice speed to cut up field, and then right when they came up to hit him, he did that spin move and was able to, able to get a yard or two out of that as well. So going to make it third and manageable here for the Blue Jays, and I, I think this is going to be four-down territory. Uh, as well. 6.15 left in the first half. 0-0 zero to zero is our score. Ball put on the far hash. Third and four for the Blue Jays as they go back to the I formation. Again, I formation in Melbourne. Throws a quick screen out there to Reuter. Reuter still on his feet, fighting forward, and he gets enough for the first and ten. You know, that was all sheer willpower out of Reuter because if he would have went down that first uh, first hit he took, he would have been short, but he was able to spin out of that and just fought for the first down. About eight on that uh, pass completion in there from Melvin to Reuter as the Blue Jays have a first and ten from the Hoisington 27 yard line. 528 left here in the first half. 0-0 zero zero, as they put receivers to the left and the right. Back to the I formation. Long count in there. It's going to be given in there to, to uh, Gavin Sproul. Sproul took a pretty good licking, but uh, like I said, able to fall forward for some positive yards. Looks like a gain of two on a play. Second and eight. A long seven, I guess we could say. Yeah. <laughs> and, so. you know, Sproul's um, been uh, given some hits there on defense, but he took a pretty good one there running the ball. Ball resting at the Cardinal 24-yard line as the Blue Jays will stay in the eye formation. Cade Melvin stays up underneath center, takes a snap, a quick a quick up screen pass over to the right, and it was short. Boy, he just he didn't even plant his foot. Well, Melvin got hit when he was releasing that ball. He um, he got hit. That's why that ball was short. It's going to be third and seven is what they're calling that. And if you're watching this on uh, live.usd211.com, you'll see that the snow is surrounding Travis Field here. A big thank you out to the wrestlers who uh, scooped today, and of course, probably members of the. Booster Club and, of course, the, the staff of uh, USD 211 as we're back into play. Melvin scrambling, trying to get it off, and he throws it in there to Walmart. Walmart had to come back, and I don't know if that's a completion. I, they are yeah, calling the call completion. Catch, but I don't know how much. <laughs> I think they lost a yard on it, maybe, um, even though it will go down as completion. I think he had somebody targeted, and all of a sudden he kind of wanted to take a look to his right, and then he was being chased, and he had nobody else to throw to, and he completed to Walmart for a yard. Now it's going to be fourth and six. Blue Jays will be going forward here with 426 left here in this first half. Quick pitch in there to Walmart as he fumbles the ball, and they couldn't get it go. It's going to be a planned reversal. There's a flag on the play. I think it looks like maybe piling on or a late hit. Uh, against the Cardinals, and uh, that might be redo it down. Well, that's well. I don't know redo. Uh, it'll be a yeah. it'll, it'll be a fourth and probably two or so, depending on the severity well, of that the was penalty. fourth down. That's so right. if we don't play, replay the down, then uh, we'll give it over. Well, they'll give us anyway. a fourth. And, they'll give us a penalty and personal foul against the Cardinals. As there's a, a but they're oh, they're going to give it to them. They said the penalty wasn't enough to. Uh, Give the first down, but it will back them up, though. Right. 
Yeah, it's going to be 0-0 uh, zero, zero here with 4.18 left in the first half. Again, you've been listening to KQ and K 106.7 AM and FM Norton. We're here at Travis Field where the Norton Blue Jays and the Hoisington Cardinals are locked up at 0-0. Zero to zero. 418 remaining in this first half. First and 10 for the Cardinals as they take over possession at their 15 yard line. Well, you would have thought that would have been enough for a first down, though, where they put that ball. <laughs> yeah, you'd think so. Because if they did from a spot foul, as they explained it to both, rep, uh, both head coaches. Well, let's see what's going on here. 418 remaining in the first half. As the Cardinals come up to the line of scrimmage in their double wing formation. Haxton underneath center. Tries to put a man into motion. He's going to keep the ball himself. He still gets to the line as he only has one person to beat. Jonah Reuter. Reuter trying to cut in there. And he'll get the tackle, but not before yeah, the, he <laughs> travels into Blue Jay territory. Yeah, it wasn't much of a safety net for the Blue Jays. Once he was able to get past that initial uh, line, there's just no safety net. Reuter um, took a good enough angle where he's able to run him down. But 63-yard uh, run in there by Mason Haxton. Yeah, the damage was done. Sorry. Damage was done in there by the Cardinals. They're going to call it a 68-yard run in there. I'm going to put more time on the end zone clock there. Well, now they start the clock. So, first and 10 for the Cardinals. 3.57 left here in this first, second quarter. 0-0 zero to zero as they do again put a man into motion. They give it in there to Pedigo. Pedigo falls forward for about maybe two on the play. Ra ra wrapped up in there by Hawks and Wilfong. For the Blue Jays. They only give them one, so it's second and nine now. Looked like Pettigo didn't get a very good start in there. We've seen a couple times where some Blue Jays and Hoisington Cardinals slip in a little bit. Second and nine for Hoisington. Is they're going to... Haxon will keep the ball as he tries to go forward. He will get up across the 15 to the 14. A gain of two on the play. It's going to be third and seven now. Yeah, uh, number 21, Tucker Farnsteel, comes flying through there and wraps him up for the short gain. Uh, third and seven for Hoisington. 2.53 remaining here in the first half. As they put a receiver to the... Near side, receiver to the far side, double wing formation, fullback is Wyatt Pedigo. Put a man into motion, Pedigo off the left tackle as he gets hit several times, but he will have about a three yard gain on the play, not enough for a first and ten. Swarmed in there, led by Judson Wolfong and Brandon Fasura, able to hold him back from getting that first down. They're going to call it fourth and five, so only two yards gain in there for Pedigo. 2.15 remaining in the first half. Zero to zero again. It's going to be the double wing formation. Haxon underneath center, the fullback. Wyatt Pedigo. Pedigo will probably get this call again. They pitch it out this time to Hunter Morris, and he gets hit hard, and there's a flag on the play. That's going to be Tucker Farsteel with the open field solo tackle for the Blue Jays. And the crowd going crazy over here. Big stance by that Blue Jays defensive squad out there. Let's see what that flag is. It's Blue Jays will have first and ten. Oh, I thought they had a flag. Down I didn't there. see one out there. Oh, is, oh, he must have got the wrong. He is meant to throw his bean bag out there, probably. <laughs> so, like I said, great stance in there by the Blue Jays. First and ten for the Blue Jays as. Uh, they are on the Blue Jay 10-yard line. A quick pass over there to uh, Carter Jones as he's on his feet. Gets about eight on that as a quick screen pass to his right. That's a long pass, too. It kind of made me nervous a little bit being this <laughs> close to our end, 
end zone, but uh, worked out in there. And Carter, just one man to beat, and he had a lot of green grass in front of him. They're going to give him seven on the play. Second and three for the Blue Jays. 138 left here in the first half. We're at zero to zero eye formation. And it's going to be handed off into the fullback to Sproul. Sproul will go nowhere. May have lost a yard on the play. Yeah, no room to run in there for Sproul. It made me nervous a little bit. He had that ball hanging out there with one hand. And uh, the way they've been trying to yank that ball out really made me nervous. But Spow able to hold on to it. They will give him one yard. I'll, I'll take that. Yeah. Third and three for the Blue Jays. 940 people watching here tonight on LiveUSD211.org. And it looks like we're going to have a timeout. Norton wants to talk about it with 104 left here in the first half. Even as the KQK 106.7 AM and FM, Norton. Hadley Hauser, a senior at Norton Community High School, has played sports for nearly 10 years and throughout that time has had many coaches who have been a positive role model. Coaches are always looking to help players improve both in the sport as well as in life. Make sure a thank you to a coach that has made a positive impact in your life. A message from the Kansas State High School Activities Association and the student advisory team. Welcome back with 104 left here in the first half. Norton faced with a third and three situation as they go into shotgun formation. A high snap, and as we give it, it's going to be Cade Melvin with the carry as he's going to get maybe back to the line of scrimmage. I thought they handed it off there. I did too, but like I said, uh, nice defense in there by the Cardinals. They're going to call another timeout here, so we're going to go ahead and try to catch up on our sponsor list. We're glad that you're listening here to 106.7 and, of course, watching on live.usd211.org. Leadership plays a vital role in today's society, yet some people don't understand what it truly means to be a leader, says Storm Dial, a senior at Emporia High School. Oftentimes, people view a leader as someone who is at the front of the pack, blazing a trail for the rest. Of, for the rest, true leaders take a step back, assess the situation, and use all of the group's skills and abilities to reach the goal. As Lao Tzu, a Chinese philosopher, once said, "When the best leader's work is done, the people will say we did it ourselves." A message from the Kansas State High School Activities Association back and the Student back Advisory field. Council. Blue Jays faced with a fourth and a long two situation in Blue Jay territory. Ball rests on the Blue Jay 18-yard line. They need to go to the 20 for the first and 10. 58 seconds left here in this first half. 0-0 zero to zero is our score. It looks like Hoisington will drop somebody back here as there's really quite a bit of time left here. And Blue Jays, we're going to have a, another timeout. I don't believe Hoisington liked what they seen. They thought maybe that they were going to punt the ball. They sent guys back, but they went into a kind of a diamond formation, and that Hoisington decided that they're going to have to take a look at that. They weren't prepared for that. Yeah, but, fourth and two with the way the defense is playing. Um, you know, anything's on the table for the Blue Jays. Like I said, as good as uh, – as Walmire's leg is, if we draw them off sides even, that's a five-yard penalty. So um, they have to try to uh, expect anything out of the Blue Jays. You know, and I talked to Coach Melvin this week, and he mentioned, he says, you know, I asked him if he's going to change up anything. Is Well, he says, we noticed some things that uh, we might be able to do with them. So okay. I'm wondering if that's something that they thought maybe they could, uh, you know, get them to use their timeouts and or maybe even – run for two three yards in that formation so let's see what the Blue Jays do this time as Hoisington's not going to drop anybody back at this time but like I said if nothing else it made them use a timeout and they're trying to get, get them off size it's a hard count in there Blue Jays will probably come up with a timeout as they do they do come up with a timeout because they were trying to go for that hard count uh, there to bring a 
the an offside penalty to go out there. But like I said, Fig, exactly, you said exactly, uh, made him burn a timeout, which could be very valuable when you're talking about under 50 seconds left trying to get the ball down the field. But then again, now the Blue Jays have to use a timeout, and they'll probably come out and they'll punt this time. But right. uh, like you mentioned, Walmart has a great leg. Pin them across the 50 would be ideal and force them to, you know, work that 50 yards for a score. And, of course, 58 seconds remaining here in this first half, 0-0. Zero to zero. It's been an excellent, excellent first half here as Walmart does back up to punt. Uh, standing on the 47-yard line is going to be number two, Avery Brewer. It's a nice kick. Boy, that's a nice kick. And Brewer's going to field it, though, at the 47. Oh, there's a push in the back. There's, there's a tackle <laughs> oh, in there wow. by by uh, Trump. No, Drake Harding was going down the field, and this kid hit him with both hands right, right square in the back. Uh, amazing that that wasn't called. 50 seconds remaining here in this first half, 0-0. Zero to zero. Hoisington will have a first and 10 in Blue Jay territory. Ball will rest off the 47-yard line of Norton. Going to have to be careful with the big plays around the end. Going to have to button that down make sure the end stays home. Blue Jays, the four-man front. And oh, the ball on the first Oh, no. he got a jump on that. He tried picking it up. And Blue Jays think they have it. Yes, yeah, Sproul. But- Tried picking that up instead of jumping on it, or else he would have had that ball, but he still felt like he got it. That's going to be about a six-yard loss on there. Second and 16 now for Hoisington. 40 seconds remaining here in this first half as now they go into Cardinal territory as the ball rests at the Hoisington 48-yard line. Mason Haxon, he'll come up to the huddle. Dispatches play out as he puts receivers out to the left and to the right. Double wing formation. Haxon comes up underneath center, puts a man into motion. They're going to give it in there to Pedigo. Pedigo trying to get out of bounds and does get out of bounds. He'll get up to about the 44-yard line. Eight-yard gain in there for Wyatt Pedigo as he drug. I believe he drugged Jonah Reuter for three <laughs> yeah, yards. He, he was uh, kept the legs moving there, but uh, the Blue Jays just have to be careful of the big play here and make sure they got somebody back as a safety net. Haxton comes in from the sideline with his play. 0-0 zero to zero is our score. 15 seconds remaining here in this first half as they come up to address the ball and up a receiver to the left and to the right. Blue Jays. Drop back a few as Caxton drops back, throws it up, has a guy there, can't, he runs away from it, he couldn't find it over there as Haxton threw it in behind him. Yeah, covered in there by Devin Gasper, who, who I thought had pretty um, good coverage. He had him posi- himself positioned in front of the receiver, and like I said, he just couldn't get turned around to make that catch. Uh, but Gasper in great position back there um, as a defensive back. Fourth and... Fourth and seven for Hoisington. Nine seconds remaining as they're going to drop somebody back to punt. I think they feel satisfied with going into halftime zero to zero. And there's a penalty yeah, off, as the be offside on Sproul. Yeah. Got a little jump there. Yep. Didn't really need it, but I know he's wanting to make a big play. That's going to make it fourth and short now for the fourth and seven. Fourth and two for the Cardinals. Will they make a play, go go for it, or will they go ahead and punt it away? I'm guessing that they're going to go ahead and 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 go for it here. It looks like nine seconds remaining. They got oh, going to drop punt. the punter back. Yeah, punter Mooney. Blue Jays set still. They let Mooney kick it. It's a line drive end over kick, and the Blue Jays won't have anybody. There in the end zone or in the uh, backfield, and the yeah, you have to be careful. With one second left, it's going to be hard to even drop back and down it and let that clock go. That'll be down, uh, first and ten from the three, and with one point two seconds left here in this first half, going to just kind of quarterback sneak that and try to down the ball, get it out of the end zone. It's been a great half, to It has been. <laughs> Uh, it, you know, for the score being 0-0, zero, zero, it's been a pretty exciting game. And Melvin will take the knee, and that will be the end of the first half as the Norton Blue Jays and the Hoisington Cardinals 
tied 0-0 zero to zero here at Travis Field. We'll send it back to the station. Hear a few words from our sponsors. We'll come back when we'll talk about the first half here in Norton. Lindsey Anderson, a recent graduate from Chapman High School, says sports require a lot of hard work to be successful. Giving all your effort all the time is hard, and most people aren't willing to do it. High school activities teach young people how good work ethic often results in positive outcomes. Complaints are made about this generation's laziness and bad work ethic. Students who choose to participate in activities offered at their own high school learn valuable life lessons such as this one. A message from the Kansas State High School Activities Association and the student advisory team. Hello and welcome back to Travis Field. Our score here after the first half, Norton 0, Hoisington 0, and it's it's gone a lot faster than last week went, Trent. Yeah. Uh, I'll tell you what, and there's no scoring. And, uh, you know, I I don't know what uh, Hoisington's coach is feeling like right now going to the locker room 0-0, zero to zero, but I know that uh, Lucas Melvin and his staff has got to be ecstatic. I, and I agree, like I said, but you, you got to give it to the – uh, the defense just playing lights out here. They gave up a big play, but was able to hold them down there uh, in the red zone when it counted. And you know, wrapping up like they have to, they have to wrap up on these guys. But that defensive front just you know led in there by several seniors and you know and Sproul having a big game, junior and you know Ruder um, outstanding play there from his defensive back spot. Knocking that ball away, just all all around outstanding. Um, you know, uh, Gasper in there. It just you know, you just can't name them all. They're, the whole defense just playing lights out, and it shows with the zero zero score here in the first half. Again, like we mentioned, zero to zero here, and they, this first half went went really quick. And here's kind of <clears throat> the stats, uh, how they went here that first half. Kate Melvin, he is five of six for fifty yards uh, in the passing. Well. There, there we go. And then, uh, in for a total of 50 yards in, in the passing and um, running wise, Cade Melvin he has seven carries for four yards. Luke Walmart six carries for a negative eight yards. 
Gavin Sprout, two carries for three. Jonah Reuter and Tucker Ponstill both one carry for four yards. Uh, really only seven total yards. And man, I, I don't know if I've ever, <laughs> I'm almost kind of embarrassed to say that. I mean, but I know. I mean, that just tells a little bit of the story here. Yep. Passing wise, who has all that yardage passing wise? It looks like it's going to be Devin Gasper has one for 19. And uh, Brandon Basura one for 15. Jonah Reuter has uh, one for eight. Carter Jones, one for seven. And Luke Walmire, one for one. So uh, that's where the offense has been so far is the passing game. But I don't know that the Hoisington has very much more. Yeah, Melvin really spread the ball around in that first half. For Hoisington, Mason Haxton, he's uh, <coughs> excuse me, zero for four in the passing game. In the running game, it's Wyatt Pedigo, 12 rushes for 72 yards, his longest being a 28-yarder. Number seven, Mason Haxon, five carries for 66. Cade Mason, three for one. And Hunter Morris, two for 17. And, you know, you take away, and that's for a total of 156 yards of rushing. You take away uh, Haxton's and Pedigo's long runs. And, yep. oh, and, 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 you know, I guess as far as that goes, uh, Morris has run, too. So, you know, that's really only like three plays that they've actually succeeded with getting that out of that 156 yards. Got most of yards. yards, yeah, out of those three. But, um, I'm, like I said, I mentioned uh, Coach Melvin Pops possibly pretty happy here. I, I mean, uh, I'm sure that he's happy with his defense. He's been happy out all year long with the defense and, and how good they've been doing. And they get stronger each game. Uh, but now he's going to have to go in there and tweak the offense a little bit. Hopefully the coaches in the in the box was able to see some things that they might be able to do here in the second half, and just likewise, Hutchins or uh, Hoisington also did the same. Well, like you said, it seems like you know in spurts <coughs> we're doing good, but just <coughs> after that first series where we really moved the ball down the field, it just seems like we'll have a, a few good plays and then we stall out. So, like I said, we've actually had several different receivers catch the ball, um, and uh, we just yet to get a string going, but we get the ball here um, starting the second half, and like I said, if we can just get some momentum going and uh, string some a few good plays together, um, I think we have a good chance of getting some scores here on the board. And again, our score is 0-0 zero to zero here after one half of a play here at the sub-state game. Winter gets to go to the state championship in Salina next week or at, uh, on Saturday after Thanksgiving here, but then uh, one other thing is is that uh, there is a couple area teams out there that uh, are playing, and they are also Mid Continent League uh, teams. Smith Center Redmen are playing the Plainville Cardinals, and Cardinals lost that first round, first time this year. I believe that was the second or third game of the year, uh, and now we're tied up in that game, seven to seven, uh, for the that game over there i believe that's at smith center also too you had you had a little bit more play by play on that coverage though um yeah they they was going back to kick the ball and they kind of had miss plainville miss, or plainville yeah went back to kick and they um misplayed that a little bit and smith center got some good field position out of it and was able to uh, go in and tie it up so again our score is zero to zero here we're about seven minutes seven eight minutes away from the second half kickoff again blue jays and cardinals zero to zero here so one i'll give you a kind of a, where you can find this game if you want somebody to uh listen or watch this excellent game here at substate at travis field you can go to 106.7 listen to it on the radio please if you're in your stands if you know somebody that's got their phone also you know 106.7 or www.kqnk.com uh if you can listen to it in the stands that way also um if you have an ipad or your computer or or even your your cell phone, you can watch that at you live l i v e dot usd two eleven dot org. We've had is oh I've seen nine hundred and seventy seven people over there. Like you said, tell yeah. your friends because we got quite a game going on here, and if they're not tuning in, they're missing out. Right, so again, six, seven minutes to the second half kickoff. We're going to go ahead and send it back to the station, kind of catch up a little bit on our commercials, but you've been listening to KQNK 106.7 AM and FM, Norton. I guess we can do this.
Hello and welcome back to Travis Field. Great 2A sub-state game. It broke out here at Travis Field. Snow-covered. Tra- was a snow-covered. Yeah, it was. But uh, we're about a minute or two away from the uh, kickoff here. Second half kickoff. 0-0 uh, zero to zero is our score. Been a lot of hard hitting and a lot of good strategy by both sides tonight. And again, winner gets to go to state. So I'm sure that every precaution and every opportunity is they've done what they have done today and like i said whenever you uh, see a team for the second time of the season it's uh who can make the adjustments who can you know find something in the film a weakness to exploit or or you know what did i did we do wrong the first game that we can um adjust and and i tell you what the blue jays made some tremendous adjustments uh just been lights out on defense they've had some good plays on offense as well like i said just um, unable to you know make a string of plays but a lot of that goes to uh to the cardinals defense you know they're playing tough too they, they got some you know big kids uh hard-hitting uh football players on their side and this has just been a defensive battle um so far this first uh, this first half of the game and again we mentioned zero to zero is our score about two minutes from the second half kickoff and and we'd like to thank uh, usd 211 for uh, broadcasting our audio on their video and of course that's at live.usd211.org and and it, i'm sure it was advertised to hoisington and we'd like to see more in the stands but we have had as many as 1080 viewers views viewers today uh, to watch this game so you know how important this game is out there and of course uh we have i have several people i have a friend of mine a classmate from oklahoma said he's been listening so uh hi out there brian and trent you and i have a very good friend and uh i believe she's they're at Central Plains. I don't know where she's living, but she's yeah, out there, yeah. and uh, she's seen good football through coming up from uh, Central Plains. Which, uh, she gives us a shout-out there. Uh, we've had shout-outs from Missouri, Oklahoma, Kansas, Nebraska, uh, you know, all over. And we we thank you for being there. But I'll tell you, the, some of the real heroes tonight here are the people that cleaned off this field. Yeah, <laughs> I'll tell you what, there's piles and piles of snow on the edge of Travis Field tonight. And, of course, the stands, they were cleaned out too. Wrestlers and booster club members and members of the community and the, and the, and the school staff, USD 211 staff, excellent job tonight. You guys did wonderful. And I've had several people say, I can't believe they moved that much snow in about three hours. And, and what an excellent job they did. And they did an excellent job. They, they really did. Like I said, um, can't say enough about the hard work they put in to make this game possible. And uh, Hoisington really traveled well. They had some. They have some big numbers in their stands. And I oh, got to give a kudos to the Hoisington coaches. I guess they did their own pathway to the field <laughs> from the, from the field to their locker room. Yeah, the coaches. The coaches were out there with a the shovel in hand, um, making uh, snow fly. So, uh, you know, a, a great effort here and great teamwork by everybody, in, including the opponents. That you know, they they lend a hand out there. And matter of fact, I heard this morning that they they called and says, "Hey, we still want to come. We want to play." Yeah, so, you know, absolutely. that got the wheels turning in order to get the field uh, ready to go. Uh, real happy with the way the Blue Jays played that first half. Really limited the penalties, and that's one thing that we said that they had to do was keep the penalties down and try to win the turnover battle to win this game. And just uh, I thought they'd done a phenomenal job that first half of keeping those penalties down. We're about ready to get the second half started here. Zero to zero is our score. Back for the Blue Jays as they had won the toss and they deferred to the second half. It's going to be Jonah Reuter and Carter Jones back for the Blue Jays as they stand on their 10-yard line. Mooney for Hoisington, the kicker, as he looks left and right. And we're off the second half. A low end-over-end kick will be taken by Carter Jones. He fumbles it up. Now he tries to cut back, goes up across the middle. He trips over the 20-yard line. We had talked that maybe the field wasn't all that bad, but I think he dug in a little too deep, but he not a bad uh, kickoff return. Yeah, the, the turf monster got a hold of him out there, and we like I said, we, that's not the first time we've seen it tonight, so it has to be kind of slick down there on that field anytime you get some type of head of steam behind you. First and 10 for the Blue Jays at their own 24-yard line. 11.55 left here in the third quarter. 0-0 zero to zero is our score. The Blue Jays will put twins to the near side. One receiver to the far side. Shotgun formation. Melvin's going to hold on to the ball. He's going to run around the edge. 
trying to get around the edge, maybe gets two on the play, and he looked pretty tentatively like he was not ready to open up any at all. Two-yard gain for Cade Melvin, second and eight for the Blue Jays. Shrum will come in with the play as Gasper comes out. Yeah, I'm anxious to see what what kind of adjustments the Blue Jays made for their offense coming out here in the first half or second half. Receivers put three to the near side, a single receiver to the far side. Basura is in the slot as they back out, throw a screen over there to Carter Jones, and it's incomplete. Just off the fingertips of Jones, or else he could have cut up field and had a quite a quite a lane to run through. Eleven minutes and fifteen seconds left in the third. Blue Jays third and eight from their own 26-yard line. That might have been Melvin's first incompletion. It's a second. Or second? Okay. Yeah, he's five of seven now for 50 yards. Third and eight for the Blue Jays as they come up to the line of scrimmage with receive, twin receivers to the far side, single receiver to the near side. Shotgun formation. Cade Melvin takes a snap, tries to come across field, has receivers. Jonah Reuter, he's out to the races, and he gets caught from behind, but he gets into the Cardinal territory. I tell you what, what a beautiful pass in there by Cade Melvin. Led the receiver in Jonah Reuter and just put it right on his hands in stride. Couldn't ask for a better play from the Blue Jays. 35-yard pass completion to Melvin to Reuter. Blue Jays in Hoisington territory. 11 minutes remaining here in the third quarter. First and 10 for the Blue. As they put receivers left and right back up to the I formation as they are in Cardinal territory. Melvin looks to his left, to his right. Now swings it out to Reuter. Reuter again catches the ball. He'll fall forward as he tried to spin out of that. Maybe a yard. And I do like that play. Like I said, Reuter just really one broken tackle from pay dirt. And that happened on both plays here. Unable to get away from the defender. Nice tackling in there by the Cardinals. But, you know, like I said, one broken play and Reuter takes it to the house. Second and eight for the Blue Jays. 10-23 left here in the third. Zero to zero is our score as they put twins to the right, twins to the left. Shotgun formation, pistol formation for the Blue Jays. And they're going to keep it. Melvin's got the right tackle, cuts across the back to the middle as he gets hit. I don't know if he wanted to come across yeah. the middle or not. <laughs> I, I, he came back to the middle right where all the traffic was. I'd like to see him keep going, taking that outside, and I think he probably would have got close to the first down marker. Five-yard gain in there for Cade Melvin. Makes it third and a long two. Third and three, we'll call it. 9.50 left in the third quarter. Really going to open up the playbook here on third and short. Um, obviously, I think we're in four down territory here, so if we don't get it here, I see us going for it. Blue Jays will be in the shotgun as they put a man into motion. And it's going to be Melvin up the middle. He's trying to get the first down. He's going to be close here on that first down. Yeah, and Pettigo staying home and able to come up and make that tackle to, to make it really close. Looks like they're going to be a little short. It's going to be fourth and inches, and they're going to go ahead and uh, measure that. Like you mentioned, it looks a little shy here. But Pettigo able to come up and make that tackle uh, right there at the first down marker. As they get stretched out, and see what they indicate. And it's going to be short, half a football. They're going to call it a football. I'm calling it a half a football. You know, we got uh, um, Smith there snapping the ball. Uh, if he gets a good um, push off, I'd like to see Melvin sneak this right behind Smith for the first down. As they're going to try to spread out the defense, they're going to go the shotgun formation, fourth and uh, half a yard, and they're going to have whistles, and it's going to be a timeout, I believe. Norton wants to talk about it with 9.15 left in the third quarter, 0-0. Zero to zero. Blue Jays face with the fourth and one situation. Rachel Shanker, a recent graduate from Oswego High School, says one important aspect of activities is teamwork. A team can have multiple players that excel, but if the team does not set common goals and unite, they will not be successful. It is vital that a team comes together as one when a team realizes that they are in it all together. That is when they succeed. Teamwork makes the dream work. 
a message from the Kansas Welcome State High School Activities Travis Association and the student advisory team. In the third quarter, Blue Jays moving the ball, but now they're stalled with a fourth and uh, half a yard to go for a first and ten. They are in Cardinal territory. Huge fourth down here for the Blue Jays offense. Like I said, uh, less than less than or a yard or less than a, than a yard for the first down here. I'd like to see them just go under center and just push forward. Try to get that first down off center. Blue Jays with two timeouts left, and, of course, the Cardinals with three as they will go with the I formation. Melvin will come up underneath center. Hard count, and he calls the Blue Jays off. The Blue Jays will be called for a penalty. Yeah, two Blue Jays jumping there, it looked like. But Melvin, uh, Cade Melvin, not happy kind of getting on his line a little bit right there because I know they discussed that in the huddle. And that's going to be fourth and four and a half. Actually, they looked like they brought that back farther than what yeah, it did. But yeah, made, made it, like I said, four, fourth and a half yard to um, going to have to open the playbook up here a little bit. The ball will be on the Cardinal 35-yard line. They're waiting for the end zone clocks to uh, get to 25. And now they'll start those clocks. 9.07 left here in the third. Melvin in the shotgun takes a look to his left and has Carter Jones. And it's not going to be enough for a first and 10. It's like a gain of four on that play. As Carter got hit immediately, if he would have been able to turn around, he might have been able to get that additional yard. Yeah, I would like to have had a pass play past the first down marker. I don't know why they would have thrown that or had the uh, the route go short of that. This didn't make a lot of sense. First and 10 for Hoisington as they will take over on downs at their 30-yard line. 8.58 left here in this third quarter. 0-0 zero to zero is our score. Really, the first big mistake of the Blue Jays at the ball game going off sides there at fourth and short. Double wing formation for Hoisington as they pitch it out there to Pedigo. Pedigo sidesteps one, but he meets several other Blue Jays for no gain on the play. Yeah, Cade Melvin come shoot, came shooting in there from his safety position, able to slow Pedigo down just a little bit even though he wasn't able to wrap him up and make the tackle, slowed him down and got him off his well, path. They'd give him a yard, though. He was yeah. <laughs> Uh, I, we're up here. I don't know what's down, going on down there, evidently. That's so, true, but, <laughs> you know, nice gang tackling in there from the Blue Jays. Second and nine for the Cardinals. 8.25 left here in this third quarter. Zero to zero is our score. They put a man into motion, and it's going to be, I think, Caxton missed his guy there, the quarterback. and Yeah, stopped in there by Judson Wilfong. It looked... Looked like it might have slipped in there a little bit. No gain on the play. Third and nine now for the Cardinals. Tough sledding in there for the Cardinals. That Blue Jay front holding strong. Poisonton will come out with a receiver to the near side. One to the far side. Double wing. Haxon underneath centers. They put a man into motion. It's going to be a counter in there. It's going to be Morris. Morris will get up to about the 38, a gain of five on the play. And Sproul was actually in the backfield and able to come up from behind and bring him down from behind to keep him from getting that first down. So nice job in there by Sproul weaving through there and picking him off from behind. Fourth and three for the Cardinals. Ball resting at the Cardinal 38-yard line. 7-12 remaining as they will go back to punt. Blue Jays won't send anybody back. Blue Jays playing pretty cautious here. They must have seen something on tape. Mooney with a line drive kick, and it'll take a Hoisington bounce. Oh, it sure does. Wow. We'll take it down to the 19 of the Blue Jays. As the Blue Jays will have first and 10 from their 19-yard line, 6.53 left in the third. Our score, 0-0. Zero to zero. I don't know if you're watching or listening, but you sure picked the right game tonight. Yeah, been a really back-and-forth defensive battle between these two teams. 
you, it makes you feel like the first big broken play um, could really be the difference maker. Reuter split off to the near side as Carter Jones is to the far side. Eye formation for the Blue Jays. They give it off to Walmart. Walmart will get by, hit behind the line. They're just keying on Luke Walmart tonight, and they have not allowed him any yardage. A loss of one on the play. Matter of fact, I think Luke is probably negative nine carry or nine yards right now. Ne- uh, did you add that last one yard? Yeah, neither oh. team really able to get a push from their offensive front. That defensive front for both sides really uh, dominating the line of scrimmage. Blue Jays will put trips to the far side of the field. Twins to the near side. Shotgun formation. Cade Melvin takes a snap. Looking downfield. Being rushed. Throws it to the side. To his right. And that's going to be caught in there by Walmart. Walmart will have a first and ten and more. Yeah. I, I, you know, after a few plays in there by, by that Blue Jays offense through the air, it seems like they are susceptible to the pass play. 22-yard pass completion, Kate Melvin to Luke Walmeyer, just as we were giving Luke a guff about not <laughs> running right. very good. And he comes free and was able to catch it for 22 yards. You know, anytime you get an athlete like Walmeyer, you just want to get it in his hands, whether it's on the ground or through the air. First but and I- 10 for the Blue Jays, 5.50 left here in this third quarter. Melvin drops back, trying to go deep, has a man, Carter Jones, and he also throws Carter. Yeah, Carter with a probably four or five steps on his man, but just overthrown by about three or four yards from Cade Melvin, or else uh, that would have been a big play for the Blue Jays. And actually, Cade was kind of set. Uh, he hadn't been set most of the night, and he was able to set, as you can see how good of a throw that that was. That, that was about a uh, 25-yard pass through the air. Yeah, and like I said, actually uh, had a little time in the pocket to set his feet, and and that might have been the problem, able to get too much arm behind it. High formation again for the Blue Jays as Melvin will roll out to his left. Goes downfield again. He has Jonah Reuter open. Reuter oh. can't catch up to it. Oh, man. Reuter was kind of. He uh, was kind of stopping and starting. Did he should have just kept running. Yeah. If he would have kept running, that would have been a big play. Like I said, overthrown by three or four yards. But Reuter kind of got contacted by the defensive back and just wasn't able to keep the stride going. And they have been picking on to this. It's the Blue Jays' left side here. They've been picking on it. They and have an open I say receiver. go back to Reuter one more time and give him the jump ball. He's got probably, what, four or five inches on that defensive back. And uh, you know how Reuter can jump <laughs> through the roof. So I'd like to see that. Third and ten for the Blue Jays. Ball resting off the Blue Jay 40-yard line. His trips are to the near side and a single receiver to the far side. Melbourne, again, goes to that side. Has a... Re- a reception that's in there too. Basura looks like Basura. Yeah, enough for a first and ten as he went past the the first and ten marker. Gets it up to about the forty nine yard line of Hoisington. Good for twelve yard pass completion. <laughs> I tell you what, he took a beating in there too. After he caught that ball, he was hit by three or four jerseys in there and was able to hang on. First and ten for the Blue Jays on the Cardinal forty nine yard line. Shotgun formation for the Blue Jays as they put Carter Jones into motion. Melvin trying to go off left tackle. He'll get enough for for, uh, for two yards. Yeah, like I said, playing that run tough. But, you know, one to two yards in there maybe. But I'd like to see us keep attacking through the air. Um, Melvin really got has this pass down, throwing strong, hard out there on a cold night like tonight. But the receiver's doing a good job of bringing that ball in. Gasper comes out, Sproul comes in, second and nine for the Blue Jays, 444 left in the third. Zero to zero is our score. Again, the Blue Jays will go back to the I formation. Melvin comes up underneath center as he rolls to his right, looks downfield. It's intercepted by Pedigo. It's fumbled. Fumbled it. Fumbled it. The Blue Jays are on it this time. Oh, man, what a big break in there for the Blue Jays. I didn't see who from the Blue Jays knocked that loose. The intended receiver come up behind and poked his hand in and punched that out there. And Carter Jones was able to land on that ball. I, think I said that's enough for first and ten for the Blue Jays. Well, it's, I think it's actually considered a turnover and then the turnover again. Uh, 
<laughs> I, I don't know how that, that works, but it looks like it's going to be first down 10 for the Blue Jays, and they really dodged a bullet there. Yeah, Pedigo goes up, and the receiver was open. He was just a low throw, and Pedigo pulls that down. The receiver comes up, pops his wrist in, or uh, punches it, ball for the fumble. Blue Jays will roll to his right, left, and it's a rece- reception to Gavin Sproul as he'll get another first and 10. And good job by Reuter downfield, not blocking in the back. He actually kind of did the rebound stance where he was blo- blocking out his man and uh, opened it up for Sproul for the first down. Looks like a 12-yard pass completion to Melvin to Gavin Sproul on that screen play. And there's a, a defensive end in Cade Melvin's yeah, face. Yeah, there was. I, I didn't see what kind of uh, hit he took, but he had a lot of pressure on him. 4-10 left in the third. Blue Jays moving it down the field. Ball resting at the Cardinal 33-yard line. Melvin trying to is trying to get upfield again. He's just not getting anywhere. They have somebody keyed on yeah, Cade really bad. He, he, he's wrapped up as soon as he hits the line of scrimmage. Uh, like I said, the way they're uh, throwing the ball, I like to see him keep attacking through the air. I think they can uh, exploit Jonah Reuter down the sideline on his man. Like I said, he's got quite the height advantage over him. and he can, Like I said, he can jump with the best of them. Second and 10 for the Blue Jays. Ball on the Cardinal 33-yard line as they put twins to the left and twins to the right. Shotgun formation, and it's going to be T- Wolmeyer with the carry as he'll get across the 30. Just really no room in there um, to run up the middle. Cardinal's doing a good job of closing that down. Third and seven for the Blue Jays. To gain a three in there for Luke Walmire. Blue Jays bring in another receiver. Actually bring another tight end in. So it's going to be double tight ends. As Reuter and Jones will be the split outs. Shotgun formation for the Blue. To put a man into motion. Reuter. Open. That's oh no. And it's going to be. It's really? going to be interception. He really overthrew his intended receiver. Yeah, there was no blue jersey within 10 or 15 yards down there. All white jerseys down there. So the Cardinals will have first and 10 from their five-yard line. Yeah, just a really rare uh, extreme misfire from Cade Melvin. I don't, I don't know if the ball sailed on him and got away from him or, or if his receiver wasn't where he's supposed to be. 2.43 left here in this third quarter. 0-0 zero to zero is our score. Haxon comes up underneath center, puts a man into motion as he comes off the tackle, gets hit a couple of times, and he's going to hand that off. Actually, I was... I had Haxon carrying that ball, but it looks like it might be Pedigo, and he'll have enough for four yards, four yard gain. Yeah, like I said, <laughs> he got hit at the line of scrimmage, but he's just so tough when he keeps those feet churning, um, able to fall forward for a couple of yards. Halftime, we have Smith Center and Plainville seven to seven. Here it's zero to zero. Some hard hitting games on Highway Thirty Six yeah, tonight. There is. 2.05 left here in the third. Second and six. Long five, let's call it for Hoisington. They again handed off to Pedigo off to the left side. Gain of one on the play. Blue Jays in there gang tackling again. Uh, numbers come up the pile. You got 21 Fawnsteel and six Devin Gasper along with several other Blue Jays but good job in there by gang tackling. Uh, something we have to have against a quality running back like Pettico. Third and a long three, three, third and four we'll call it for Hoisington as they'll put a receiver to the left and to the right. Double wing for Hoisington as they put a man in the first bubble on the play but Haxon will go downfield as he has a man open and Incomplete as he overthrew him, and of course that's uh yeah he actually he lost the ball, yeah. and I, I couldn't see what Blue Jay was in the backfield, but he was just <laughs> standing there like he thought there might have been a whistle blown or something. But uh, Blue Jays actually missed out on an opportunity there. And actually, the uh, the backs, the defensive backs, were kind of full because they 
nothing was coming out of the middle, so they were they were going to approach it. And then all of a sudden, the two receivers they kept running. They had to catch up with them. Mooney back to punt for Hoisington. And there's a kick, a nice little kick in there by Mooney. Yeah, it was. It's going to be st- decent field position still for the Blue Jays. Blue Jays will have first and 10 at the Cardinal 47-yard line. That sounded like a rock when that it hit. Sure did. You can hear that thump clear up here. So first and 10 for the Norton Blue Jays is eight. Escape that bullet. 105 left here in the third. Zero to zero is our score. Blue Jays were moving the ball well with the passing. Took a little off of it, started doing some running. It was not able to, I don't think they've even got 25 yards of running yet. So first and 10 for the Blue Jays. They got 20 yards of rushing so far. Melvin has the ball. Gets across the 40. Looks like about a gain of eight on the play. Really one of the better runs up the middle tonight. They're going to call it seven. So it's going to be second and three for the Blue Jays. 49 seconds left here in the third quarter. Carter Jones will come out as Gasper will split off to the far side and Reuter to the near side. Again, the same play. It's going to be off right tackle. Spinning is Melvin. Melvin have enough for a first and ten. They're, they're putting a jumbo package in there, but the jumbo package is almost like a diamond formation around around Melvin. That's exactly what it was. I tell you what, great yak yards from Melvin, yards after contact. You know, got contacted, spun out of it, and able to get another four or five yards. First and ten for the Blue Jays at the Cardinal 30-yard line. 13 seconds left here in the third quarter. They're going to go right back to that formation. Again, he's going to follow his blockers. Cuts off to his right, and he'll get across the 30 up to the 28. Gain of two on the play. And he's kind of picking his way there. He, he, he really is. He's following his blockers. Just doing an acceptable job. The crowd going wild here for the Blue Jays. That's the end of the third quarter as we move into the fourth quarter. Zero to zero here at this substate against the Hoisington Cardinals. Sportsmanship is sometimes very hard to find in sports today. But Jace Watkins, a a senior from Burlington High School, believes it is still on solid ground in high school activities. Being positive and courteous to opponents, officials, and fans is the foundation of good sportsmanship. Remember, it is a game and is played for more than just the winner or loser. A message from the Kansas State High School Activities Association and the student advisory team. Welcome back to Travis Field. End of three quarters. We're still 0-0. Zero to zero. Norton with the ball. They have a second and eight situation. They are at the Cardinal 28-yard line. Blue Jays will come up to the line of scrimmage. They will maintain that formation. It's basically kind of a jumbo package as he has all his running backs flanking him and in the pistol. Melvin again with the ball trying to get a couple blocks. Goes across the field, spins a couple more times. He's up and gets to the end zone and he gets oh, the touchdown. Yeah. Oh, Melvin right there spinning and getting hit and just conti- continues to keep his legs moving and goes in for the score. He spun twice. Yeah, he did. <laughs> Crowd going wild here. We got these um, terrible towels for the Blue Jays. And you see him waving all throughout the crowd. Walmart will do the extra point. As Cade Melvin looks tired, he's going to be the holder. If you notice on TV, there's no cheerleaders. They are at a competition in Topeka. We wish them the best of luck. We hope you're watching tonight, but uh, we hope you have a good Saturday. The kick is up, and it is good. Yeah, yeah. Martin takes the Makes the first points here with 11:51 remaining in the in the ball game. 
Norton seven, Poisington zero. Welcome back to Travis Field. Cade Melvin runs 28 yards for the touchdown with 11.51 left in the ball game. And it wasn't an easy 28 no. yards by I no I tell means. you what, Melvin, that was one of the better runs I've seen all season. Just like I said, two spins on that play and just all heart took him in, to, in for six points. Luke Walmeyer teeing up the ball. Pedigo and Morris, I believe, is back for the Poisington Cardinals. Oh, and it's a nice kick off to the side, and they're keeping away from Pedigo. But Morris is trying to come here with a head of steam, and he gets hit hard. Yeah, number 87, Drake Harding, drags him down with an open field tackle. And the Gasper come in there to help out, and. They have first and 10 from their own 19-yard line. Nice, nice uh, defense in there. Nice kickoff defense by the Blue Jays. Yeah, those kids had to be tired. You see a lot of the same jersey numbers on special teams, offensive defense, and like I said, just down there, all heart on that field. Mason Haxon brings in the play to the huddle. 11:45 left in the ball game. Norton lead seven to nothing. Trips to the near side for Hoisington. Single back set. There was movement. Fullback made a move back there. So that's going to be a legal procedure on Hoisington. And I'm sure this crowd is helping out a little bit. It, it, it has to be. You know, a little home field advantage. And uh, you see Judson Wilfong down there getting the crowd into it. And, you know, I don't know if they need any help because uh, they, are, they are wound up over here on the, on the sidelines and in the stands. First and 15 now for Hoisington. Maxon's got to be tired, too. He runs to the sideline about every play. <laughs> yeah. And I think he's out there in off uh, defense also. I think so, too, yeah. This is the time they're going to put a double wing, put a man into motion, and it's going to be a pitch out in there. Oh, man, our, our uh, <laughs> defensive guy almost got tackled. I can't believe there's no flag. The crowd's seen it, and they're upset. And that's going to be enough for first down, I believe. Yeah. Or no, they're marking it short. They're marking it short. So they almost tackled one of the oh. Blue Jays down there from behind that was coming in for the tackle. Oh, they did give him 15 yards on that. I just can't believe they didn't call that. The crowd really wound up over it. First and ten for Hoisington. 11:39 left in the ball game. North leads seven to nothing, and they're Haxon will keep the ball he'll try to cut up the middle he'll have enough for a first and ten he was actually looking to, to hand that off but uh, yeah. he's seen a hole cut it right up the middle Norton over pursued on that play yeah he had the option and like I said just decide to follow his blocker up the field and Fasura was able to reach around and and grab him by the shoestrings and limit even a further gain there First and 10 for Hoisington at their 40-yard line. 11-18 left in the ball game. A quick 20 yards made in two yeah. plays. I feel a, a sense of urgency out of the Cardinals here now, so the Blue Jays really have to dig in. Double wing with the man in the motion. It's going to be Haxton with the ball. He builds his way up to the 50. Maybe enough for another first and 10. Yeah, it seems like uh, the Cardinals... Really got a fire lit on them now because they're moving the ball. And Ten yards at a time. Well, they're only going to say nine, so it's second and one now. Yeah. Blue Jays' stringent defense kind of giving way a little bit. Second and one for from the Cardinal 49-yard line. 10-40 remaining in the ball game. Norton leads 7 to nothing. Double wing formation. Mason Haxton underneath center. Wyatt Pedigo, the fullback. 
And they'll give it to Pedigo. Pedigo goes off right tackle, keeps his feet moving. He will go forward for the first and ten, and he'll get into Blue Jay territory. And Sproul had him around the legs there at the line of scrimmage. <laughs> I tell you what, Pedigo just kept those uh, knees up and going up and down and was able to fall forward for a couple of three yards. First and ten from the Blue Jay 47-yard line, 10-15 remaining in the ball game. Norton leading by the score of 7 to nothing. Hoisington comes out with a receiver to the near side. Man into motion, and it's going to be to Pedigo. Pedigo will fight his way up to about the 45, a gain of two on the play. Looked like the Blue Jays were going for the ball. Looked like Pedigo was yeah. trying to keep the ball to himself Well, there. Drake Harding, Harding had him pretty well wrapped up, and Judson Wilfong in there to help to help with the tackle, also tugging at that ball, trying to get the turnover, which would be huge for this defense right now. Second and eight for Hoisington, 9.30 left in the ball game. Norton leads 7 to nothing. The crowd over here on their feet, you know, an exciting, such an exciting ball game. This time it's to Pedico again as he tries to fall forward. And they're just, keep, like I said, they just keep feeding Pedico up the middle, gaining those two, three yards at a whack. Three yard gain now makes it third and five for Hoisington. Ball off the Blue Jay 42 yard line. Nine minutes remaining. And you have to think this is going to be four down territory for the Cards. They're not going to want to give the ball back to the Blue Jays. So uh, big defensive stance here for the Blue Jays. Third and five. Receiver to the near side. Man into motion. Then Haxton rolls out to his left, and it's going to be a completed pass, but it's not going to be enough. Just nice tight coverage in there by number 12, Jonah Reuter, to keep him from the first down marker. A gain of two on the play now makes it fourth and three. See what the... Uh, I can see... The, de the defense here, like I said, they had a, a bend, don't break early on, but really tighten it up this this last uh, series of downs. Looks like they're going to go for it. fourth and three. Eight thirteen left here in the ball game. Norton leads by a score seven to nothing. They have bent, but they have not broke. Let's see if they can just stop this series now. There's a Blue Jays jump off sides. Yeah, exactly what the Cardinals had planned and the Blue Jays fell right into it giving them the easy first down and that will be an easy first down is right as they will move it up to the Blue Jay 35 yard line first and 10 the Cardinals and you really hate to see that on a penalty like that because they were playing so tough uh, being so stingy stingy on that yard given up 7.49 left here in the ball game. 7 and nothing's our score. They're going to pitch it out to Pedigo as he looks for blockers. Going to get a couple yards, and he might get about five on that carry. Drove down behind by number 67, Judson Wilfong. Sure would like to see a turnover here from the white jerseys. Five-yard gain but, in there uh, for Pedigo. Pedigo keeps have to bounce it out because his hole is not opening. No, no really uh, opening up the middle whatsoever. So... Um, able to bounce it out for a nice game there, though. Second and five for Hoisington. 7-15 left in the ball game. Haxton comes up underneath center. Double wing. They put a man in motion. They're going to give it a counter in there to number one, Mason. Yeah, grabbed around the ankles um, by number 17, Brandon Vasura, and then cleaned up in there by Judson Wilfong. Like I said, those guys had to be tired down there, playing their hearts out on both both sides of the ball. So, uh, most of them playing special teams also. So just giving it everything they have down there on the field. Third and three now for the Cardinals as they come up to the line of scrimmage. And them white jerseys look pretty dirty to me. And it's going to be Mason Haxton with the carry, still on his feet. He'll have enough for a first and ten. He'll get up to the 20, a gain of five on the play. Yeah, they absolutely clobbered Pedigo going through there. That's who I actually thought had the ball. First and ten for the Cardinals at the Blue Jay 20-yard line. They've actually wasted four minutes on, uh, on this ground game. Plainville is going to be up 13-7 over Smith Center, missing the extra point. 
Hmm. Six minutes remaining in the ball game. First and ten for the Cardinals. There's a mishandle of the ball, and but he was able to get it off. But he took a big hit. Juddy comes. Jud, Judson comes up with the ball. I didn't see what happened, but the referee surely going to get together and talk about this. They were. I know that the quarterback fumbled it, picked it up, was able to give it to Pedigo. Yeah, the quarterback took a pretty good licking back there in the backfield. Didn't see who got back there, but Blue Jay was back there in his face. A gain of three on the play. Second and seven now for the Cardinals. Ball is on the Blue Jay 16-yard line. And looks like we have whistles, and we're gonna they're going to try to set the end zone clock. Now they'll start it back up. 544 left here in the ball game. Receivers left and right for Hoisington. Put a man into motion. It's going to be Haxton with the ball. As he gets hit, he'll get up to about the 12-yard line. Looks like a gain of four for Mason Haxton, the quarterback. Yeah, Judson had him around the ankles, or else he could have broke that for some some bigger yarders than he did. But going to be another big down here for the Blue Jays. You know, with that clock ticking down now, with just a little over five minutes left, this is going to be a big down here for both teams. Third and a long three for Hoisington. Blue Jays need to be disciplined as they had given up a first down by the last time that they were at this distance. Axton will give it to Pedigo. Pedigo will fight forward. To ball play, loose. play, but I think uh, Hoisington will recover it. And that's probably going to give him the first down. Yeah, that fumble gave him a first they down. They did. They fumbled it forward. I didn't know if they could do that. Can you fumble the ball forward? But well, but it's hard as hitting in this game. Is, <laughs> Evidently, is yes. I'm sure that and his co- hands are cold. I'm sure that uh, fumbling is that key was here. The, that was a big break if the if the Blue Jays could have jumped on that ball. Um, First and goal for Hoisington from the Blue Jay eight yard line. Four thirty left here in the ball game. Blue Jays crowding the line. They're going to give it to Pedigo. Pedigo will be in for the touchdown. Eight-yard run by Wyatt Pedigo. We have Blue Jay Stubblin. That's Drake uh, Harding. Seven to six. Four twenty-four left in the ball game, and Wyatt Pedigo goes eight yards in for the touchdown. Puts a lot of stress there on this field goal kicker. It's a huge kick. The way that you know. The Blue Jays moved the ball last time. Blue they Jays had need it. to stay, make sure that is a kick and not a. Oh no! Uh, there's an offsides by the Blue Jays. Got to stay disciplined. I, That's going to change. Can't let that. them where they want to go for two will, here. Will that change what they're going to do? That, the kicker's still out there. They want the tie for sure. They don't want to, to miss this. Like you mentioned. Well, now they're going to call timeout. They want to talk about it, so that we need to yeah, hear a few words. Time that we need to hear a few words from the people that brought you this coverage. We'll send it back to KQNK 106.7 AM and FM Norton. You think they go for two? Welcome back. 424 left in the ball game. Eight yard run by Wyatt Pedigo for the touchdown. Penalty by the Blue Jays. Hoisington Dow will go for the two-point conversion as it is half to the goal line, and Pedigo dives in, and they're saying nobody has said anything yet, and they're saying nothing was given, no indication. Oh, now oh, the referee no, says it. That's a late call. That I tell you they what. They had to come in and see it. That, yeah, I don't know. They couldn't I, see it from their positioning. They should have never called that. Right. I don't agree with that at all. 
and I know they wanted to get together and make sure it's right, but you know they, he could have moved a lot, a lot of, a lot of room for movement down there before they made a call. That's right, and he dove in there. Yeah. So you know a lot of possible things. You know I shouldn't speculate. He dove in there, and where he landed. Where his knees landed. They did, could never have seen it. That was so big of a pile there. But the extra two-point conversion was good. Hoisington now leads by a score of 8-7. to seven. And, you know, Tritt, that's the loudest I've heard Hoisington crowd tonight. Uh, yeah, definitely. Uh, just a huge play in there. The, the big, what a big penalty uh, against the Blue Jays. And that's the second one on that drive that really cost them. And they had been playing such a clean game up to then then you just hope that that, that doesn't uh, make the difference in this game the way they've been playing. 424 left here in the ball game. Now we do have a heck of a kicker um, in Walmart, so if we can get down the field at all in the field goal range, um, I say we let him loose. Mooney with the kick. It's a line drive kick taken in there by Carter Jones. Carter trying to follow his blockers. Cuts back, slips a little bit, still on his feet. We'll get up to about the 27-yard line. Yeah, plenty of time here to open up the playbook and get this down the field. Like I said, had some success moving the ball in this fourth quarter. Just got to keep the hammer down and uh, get down there where we can get in some, some type of scoring position. First and 10 for the Blue Jays at their own 27-yard line. Blue Jays will put a receiver to the far side and one to the near side. They'll stay in their jumbo package. Melvin rolls out, follows his blocker, tries to cut up, gets hit. He tried to spin when he got that hit. He's going to lose about three yards on that play. Yeah. Like I said, the excitement kind of went from our crowd over to the bleachers across the way now but we've got to get some something going over here on our, on our bleachers and get fired up Blue Jays act a little confused there they sent two out two in bring in two fullbacks and brought in a tight end and the clock and keeps ticking away like I said down to 340 left here in the ball game Second and 12 for the Blue Jays as they hurry up to the line of scrimmage. Trips to the near side. Melvin trying to go downfield, looking for Basura. He'll overthrow Basura. Yeah, and got leveled uh, in there by number 34 for the Cardinals. And that's going to be uh, Joshua Ball came in and leveled um, Cade Melvin. It's going to be make it th really third and long here with 328 left in the fourth quarter. Third and 12 now for the Blue Jays, as now they sense the urgency. Going to be a huge down here for the Blue Jays. Uh, Got to get something downfield. Trip to the near side, twins to the far side. Melvin, shotgun, looks downfield, has Gasper. Gasper still on his feet. He'll have it up for the first and 10. He'll get it up to the 40. Yeah, nice plug from Gasper. Like I said, such a huge down there. Possibly could have been the ball game. 15-yard pass completion from Melvin to Gasper. Yeah, Gasper able to pluck it out of the air and come down and actually make a move upfield. First and 10 for the Blue Jays at their 40. 316 left here in the ball game. Twins to the far side, twins to the near side. Shotgun formation. Melvin takes the ball, wants to go off the tackle has to break it out Pedigo has his number but not before he gets three yards on the carry yeah Pedigo but actually a Blue Jay made a really good block on him but Pedigo just able to fight it off and go over and make the open field tackle uh, but just an extremely good job in there by Pedigo fighting that block off getting over there second and seven for the Blue Jays ball on the 43 yard line of the Blue Jays receivers left and right back to the eye formation Quick look over to the left, and it's going to be behind Jonah Reuter. Incomplete pass. Third and seven now for the Blue Jays. Yeah, this <laughs> make it exciting going to third down, but uh, just off the mark there. Hopefully they got a big play here in their back pocket. Melvin comes in with the play. Out comes number 10, Gavin Sprout. 
Twins to the left, twins to the right. 2.33 left in the ball game, and we got whistles and flags. So we probably got a legal procedure call. Let's see what the indication is. Uh, Coach Melvin's pretty wound up down there. Yeah, he is. Actually, Cade had to <laughs> push him back and tell him to get off the field. It's on the Blue Jays. Yeah, Melvin's got to be, Coach's going to have to be careful here. Getting pretty wound up. Yeah. I don't know what that was called. I didn't either. I didn't really get an explanation on the call there, but legal per, or uh, participation. I don't. I don't know what that that was, but it's going to be gonna back be to third and twelve, like we was yeah. earlier. Blue Jays can't fall apart now. They have a lot of time to get a, a touchdown. They need to maintain their composure. Shotgun formation. Melvin, bl plenty of time. Has a lot of time to throw the ball. And it's going to be completed in there to Vasura. And Vasura will have enough for first and ten. Yeah, Vasura actually downfield and came back to help his quarterback out. And Melvin with a, with a fastball right in between the numbers. Just a you know, good job, obviously good, great job of up front blocking by that offensive line. Gave Melvin all kinds of time back there in the pocket. First and 10 for the Blue Jays in Cardinal territory. Ball resting at the 44-yard line of Hoisington. Shotgun formation for the Blue Jays. Melvin wants to go up the middle. Gets hit once. Keeps his feet moving. Keeps it going. Gets across the 40 after the 38. Yeah, now we've got to be... Um, Careful the clock here, a minute 50 left, and we're on a, on the Blue Jay 38-yard line. I'm guessing another 20 yards, we could um, be within Walmire's territory, you know, with that leg he, ha he has. Second and six for the Blue Jays. And downfield, and it's going to be Jonah Reuter, and he Oh! Just off his fingertips, too. Oh, Jonah had a step, and just came off his fingertips i <laughs> i seen him running that in for six points so <laughs> so close so close in there just a great ball in there by Cade melvin was leading jonah down the sidelines and jonah just unable to quite bring it in it's gonna be third and six for the blue jays as they're trying to bring in receivers now 133 left here in the ball game Blue Jays going to have to get this off here. Put a man into motion. Takes the snap. Looks to his left. Fakes it. Going to have to run the ball. And he hit, goes up the middle. And he's going to gain one yard on the play. As it, that was almost batted down as he was about ready to throw. So he tucked it in and ran. Blue Jays face with a fourth and five situation now. Well, here's the ball game. Going to come down to fourth and five here. Blue Jays want to talk about it. 125 left here in the ball game. We're going to send it back for a quick 30-second timeout. Actually, I think it hit right on top of his fingers. It's just so close. Oh, man, that was close. <sighs> Uh, almost makes you sick. Welcome back to Travis Field. Blue Jays face with a fourth and five situation. Ball is resting on the Cardinal 37-yard line. Do you go for it or do you punt it away and hope to do it? <laughs> yeah, we're going for it here. Yeah. This, is, this is the ball game with a minute 25 left. Fourth and five, 125 left in the ball game. Blue Jays put trips to the far side, twins to the near side. Single back, and that's Melvin. He's got trying to go downfield. He's going to have to run it. He's going to get up. Is he getting up for a first down? And he does. And Melvin will have enough for a first and ten. As he got pushed back think, down by I think they're going to want to measure here. That is really so close. <laughs> it's going to be crazy close. I, I, I agree with you. I think he has the first down, but as big as uh, play that is, they're going to measure it here. 
It's going to be inches. And they're going to stretch out the... Oh, my, yeah. Oh, yeah, they had it by a foot. They had it by a foot, if not a yard. <laughs> wow. Doesn't get any bigger than that right no. there. And a minute 18 left here. Blue Jays will come in the shotgun formation. Twins to the left and twins to the right. Melvin looks his left and right. Now looking down for the screen pass. And it's to Walmart. Walmart still on his feet. Still driving forward. He was down. He was down. There's yeah. a fumble. Lost the ball, but ref said he was down. And that looks like a gain of about eight. Let's call that. They're going to call it seven. Second and three now for the Blue Jays. Five, 50 seconds remaining here in the ball game. Trip to the near side, single receiver to the far side. Melvin rolls his right, looking downfield, stops, has to go, changes directions. There's a flag on the play, and he's going to have to get out of bounds. He tries to get the first and ten. He jumps for it, but that's going to block in the back or what the call was there. 31 seconds remaining, flag on the field, holding against the Blue Jays. And you know, with all that scrambling around, Trent, it's not hard to have your guy turn around and maybe right, yeah, grab him by accident. When you reverse field like that, uh, that can happen pretty easily. No, Mark. That I don't know. What do we need here to get into Walmart's field goal? Uh, well, I, he's tried a 37-yarder and had plenty of leg. It was yeah. just his accuracy was off. So, so we're going to need at least close to 20 yards here, I feel like, to get anywhere near where he can have a chance. Second and 16 for the Blue Jays as they put Twins to the near side, single receiver to the far side. Melvin rolls to his right, goes downfield, has a receiver, and Carter Jones, Carter trying to get out of bounds and does. He gets it up to the 22-yard line. Looks like that, enough for first and 10. That's going to be really close to Walmart's um, range for field goal as well. I know 24 seconds left here. Do you, are you thinking about a field goal at this position? Well, here's another scenario, though. They're on this side of the hash. He's going right. to have to angle it in. Is he a straight-on kicker? Is he, can he kick angles? Do we need a, ru a running play up the middle? Don't want to put too well, much. We've got a timeout but, left here. Yeah, so, so 24 you know, seconds left here in the ball game. Shotgun formation for the Blue Jays. Melvin drops back, looking for a receiver, being pressured. He's going to have to get out of bounds. Or, and he does get out of bounds. He does get about six more yards on the play. 16 seconds left here. Looks like we're going to have one shot probably into the end zone. And we're going to have to think about uh, the field goal after that. Eight seconds ran off the clock. Eight to seven is our score. Hoisington leading Norton. Ball resting at the Hoisington 19-yard line. Right now it's about a 39-yard kick. Blue Jays will have to hurry to get it off here. Shotgun formation. Gets it off, looking downfield, has a Carter Jones, and is, will move it up a little bit more. Ten seconds left here on the clock, and they're going to call a timeout. Ten seconds remaining. I imagine they're going to throw maybe once into the end zone, and then they're going to have to try to kick. Or are they going to kick the ball here? I think they're going to kick the ball. They put they only got eight seconds on the clock, so let's leave it here. Eight point three seconds. It's here's the scenario: Blue Jays are faced with a third and four situation. Ball is resting at the Cardinal fifteen yard line. They're going to put time on the clock. They're going to put make it ten seconds. They're going to put two seconds on the clock. Do you go for another play? You have no timeouts. I think you have to kick it or go for the end zone. Uh, and they're going to go ahead and kick it. Luke Wolmeyer's out there now, and it's going to be. And he has the leg. If the if the line can hold up and block. 33-yard kick here for get Luke Wolmeyer. Get a good snap and hold here. This is for the marbles. 
snap, the kick. It's up. It's good. Blue Berries take the lead. Seven to eight. Or, no, it's going to be ten to, ten to eight. I'm sorry. Look at that. With a 33-yard field goal to go up ten to eight with 6.2 seconds remaining in the ball game. I think we just buzzed out. We we pegged the board. Sorry about that, everybody. Yeah, I apologize. <laughs> like I said, this game's been so exciting. It just doesn't get any any bigger than the point that they just had, and th to overcome the the third down and longs and the fourth down, and you know just the heart that these Blue Jays have played with has just been amazing down there. They just had to be on the edge of exhaustion. Some of those kids down there, and you see Drake Harding coming up limping, and you know just beat up and. And just give everything they had on the field here tonight. Just got to get down here on this coverage. And uh, I don't know, surely, th I don't know how they kick this ball off, but maybe like a squib kick or keep it down I'd, in the field and try to run some clock. I'd hit that little spot right there in front of Pedigo and, and Morris. Yeah, absolutely. We're out of timeouts. They have three timeouts, but with six seconds left here, uh, like I said, just got to make some good coverage and then uh, make sure that we got some safety nets back there. 6.2 seconds left. Norton leads 10 to 8. Nobody gets off sides. Nobody. <laughs> Everybody gets a man in front of them. Let's let's right, right, exactly. Put a put a helmet on and got Walmart back there's a safety net kicking off. And now we're going to have whistles that want to sit the uh, What's it? Delay a game. Delay a game. I kind of wish they wouldn't have put the two seconds back on there. Yeah, I know. <laughs> yeah. Oh, boy. Now they're going to kick it from the 35. Smith Center leading 14 to 13 with nine minutes left in that game. Are you shaking a little yeah. bit there? No, I think it's, I'm cold, but it's nerves and excitement <laughs> as well. Right. Blue Jays kicking for the 35-yard line. Pedigo and Morris back for the Cardinals. And they're going to squib kick it. And they're going to down it at the 23-yard line. Five seconds remaining in the ball game. The, the big thing here is we've got to have a safety net. We can't let the big play go. I don't know if they're going to try to attack us through the oh. air and get a get some, try to work on a penalty that way, or if they're going to run. Well, I'm looking at a reversal. Yeah, I wouldn't be surprised if anything goes here. The main thing is that we've got to have a safety net back there with some speed that can, um, you know, make an angle or get get somewhere and make a tackle. I don't know if that guy's going to be Walmart or Ruder, but we've got to have that safety net back there where nothing gets behind us. That's what the coaches have to be telling them right now. Make sure nobody or nothing gets behind you. Got to keep the play in front of us. Got to make sure that we break down and, and, and have some form tackling here. You know, this is for a uh, state playoff berth, first time since 1989. 5.4 seconds remaining here in the ball game. Blue Jays. We'll have a four-man front. They'll put six back. The linebackers will play deep. They put twins to the far side, a man into motion. Axton trying to look downfield. Oh, tipped in there by Fun and Steel. Incomplete pass. Point six tenths of a second left here. That took five seconds for that play to develop. Yeah, like I said, almost had the interception there, but it did a good job of actually batting the ball down, uh, which you're kind of taught to do. And this is just Hail Mary here. Got to make sure there's no defensive penalties. It's the only thing that can extend the clock. And that's going to be a timeout there for Hoisington. I don't know. I can't send it back, Trent. We've got uh, <laughs> it, it's really hard to send it back. Yeah. I tell you, the crowd just over here going crazy. Um, got these big blue Norton Blue Jays towels over here that they gave out um, and it's just you know been crazy to see those being waved over here and you know the crowd is on their feet I don't think that's you see very few people sitting everybody on the edge of their seats and just uh, chanting go big blue they're it's gonna, just exciting isn't it no they're gonna put one second on the clock it's gonna make it 1.6 seconds 
really time for one play. Make sure, like I said, keep the play in front of you. Nobody gets behind you. No penalties. That's the only thing that can extend this clock is if we have a defensive penalty here. Oh, they put 15 seconds. No, let's <laughs> better not do that. Oh, they're trying to get the clock to set here. Well, I don't put boy, there. Coach Melvin's pretty upset about this 1.6 seconds. They're going to run it down. And there. There. Oh, oh went down. Past. They went past. That's 1.4. They said, leave it there. <laughs> All right. Twin receivers to the left and the right for Hoisington. Hoisington trying to look for somebody. And they're going to throw it up. And it's overthrown. Yeah. And the Blue Jays are going to win this ball game. They're going to go to the state. Blue they're going to go to the state. First time since 1989. Crowd's going crazy out here. Like I said, Blue Jays absolutely played their hearts out here tonight. You just couldn't be happier for the, you know, for the whole team. But this senior, led by this senior class and some of those seniors down there, just amazing. Blue Jays win it by the score of 10 to 8. They take down the number one ranked undefeated Hoisington Cardinals by the score of 10 to 8. They will.